The purpose of this video was to test out different topical sealers for epoxy metallic flooring. The three types tested were urethane that was water-based, urethane that's solvent-based, and then a polyaspartic coating. Before the topical sealer could be applied, the first thing that needed to be done was surface prep of the epoxy metallic. The coating had already exceeded its 24-hour recoat window, and the surface blemishes that the epoxy coating exhibited had to be sanded down. So the first thing to do was to run the grinder across it with an 80-grit diamond to smooth out any of the bubbles or any of the imperfections, and then also flatten it a bit for the areas that were high versus areas that maybe had dimples or low spots. The next step was to hand sand it for the areas where it simply had too much of a deflection in the surface that the grinder, if it was allowed to grind to the bottom of the deflection, would probably have gone through the metallic to expose the color of the floor below it, which would obviously mean the whole thing would have to be re-poured again. Once the hand sanding was complete and everything had been deglazed, the whole surface was vacuum clean. This is to remove the bulk dust that was left behind from the grinding and the sanding. Once the vacuuming was completed, the next thing to do was to solve and wipe it which consists of microfiber pads and then acetone sprayed down. This is to attract all the fine dust that the vacuuming could not collect, as well as prepare the surface for the next coating that's going to be applied to the surface. To verify if the coatings would be affected by locking down the epoxy coating after having been sanded and wiped, half of it was sealed off with a polyacrylic sealer with the expectation that sealing the floor would help the topical sealer in the way that it laid on the floor and also help any porosity that might cause bubbles as a result of the sanding and the wiping of the epoxy metallic. The first topical sealer that was used was a water-based urethane. Being a water-based, it does leave quite a bit of time to be manipulated, to be cross-rolled, so that hopefully there wouldn't be any roller lines left in it. It is a semi-gloss material. Nice part is the odor is quite low. Uh, the drawback though is it's about a two-day cure time before it can receive full traffic. It has a 24-hour recoat window, which our intention was to put two coats on to make sure to fully cover the surface, not only to seal it, but also to provide topical protection against traffic and chemical attack. After both coats were applied and it was allowed to cure, up close inspection gives an idea how the surface appears. There's very few roller marks or imperfections in it. The shine is not nearly as high as some of the other products, but it does look quite uniform. The side that had the polyacrylic sealer as a primer before the two coats of water-based urethane it appears that the surface is very uniform, does not have any scratches from the diamond grinder that went across it or any sander marks that are telegraphing through the material. Interestingly enough though, on the side that didn't have polyacrylic sealer, scratch marks and sander marks can be seen telegraphing through two coats of water-based urethane. Since applying a third coat of sealer would be impractical to hide the scratch marks, it's probably safe to assume that the 80 grit scratch that was used to deglaze the epoxy metallic was probably too aggressive. But what should have been done over the whole floor if this material is to be used as a top coat it's probably to use a higher grit diamond or to use a higher grit sandpaper maybe we should have used a 120 grit or a 150 grit diamond with regard to the sandpaper that was used 120 grit sandpaper was used so maybe 150 or 200 grit sandpaper should have been used because two coats of urethane are still allowing on the side that wasn't sealed with the polyacrylic sealer to easily show those scratch marks that were in the surface of the floor as that urethane cured and settled and the water evaporated out of it, it's basically conformed itself to the profile of the floor that was below it. So any of those scratches are telegraphing or reflecting through that top coat. The next sealer used was a solvent-based urethane. This material is designed to be installed around three mils. Being a solvent-based material but with high solids means not that much is going to be lost when that material cures. This particular material has 90% solids. So if the material is applied at three mils, not much of the thickness is going to be lost, unlike the water-based urethane. The material is very easy to apply, but with this particular material, it has no recoat window. So that means if one coat is applied and a second one is needed, the entire floor that's been coated would have to be sanded once it's cured so it can be recoated. When it comes to visual clarity of the coating, the solvent-based urethane, without a doubt, is the best. It has the deepest reflection and the clarity is terrific. Any little imperfection though is going to be very noticeable because the floor is so shiny. It's very easy to see any tiny bubbles. It's easy to see any kind of specks of dirt or trash that may have fallen into it while it was curing. So though it does have a good shine, it might be a little more temperamental or finicky because every little imperfection is gonna show. The last coating that was tested was a polyaspartic. This material was also applied over half the floor that was coated with the polyacrylic sealer and then the other half was just directly over the epoxy metallic that was sanded and solvent wiped. The polyaspartic that was used was easy to dip and roll. 
It received two coats after drying overnight, but within 24 hours to maintain that recoat window. Once cured, the shine and the clarity is quite good, almost similar to the solvent-based urethane, but looking close, it's easy to see that the material actually orange peels. There's a little bit of a profile to it that definitely draws the eye from the clarity to almost a rippled surface. Whether this is objectionable or not, or to be expected from a polyaspartic, isn't really the point. It's more a matter of comparison with the solvent-based urethane or the water-based urethane. It was easy enough to apply. There are a couple imperfections in the surface, some small bubbles, but mostly, again, random trash that floated from the air and then landed into the wet polyaspartic, which is really true of any final coating. Anytime something can settle out of the air, or a bug, or any other thing that can hit it before that surface is cured and dried could easily stick to it and, of course, affect the final result. Comparing all three products, my personal opinion would be the water-based urethane, simply because the odor wasn't that bad. It's, it's a water-based material. It has a smell, but it's not a solvent. It's easy to apply and not have roller marks. It is only a semi-gloss, but when it comes to doing a high gloss on a floor, the challenges that that presents, it's almost better to consider putting a wax coating down on the floor, which is easy to get to a flawless condition, as long as the owner of the floor understands the maintenance requirements of a waxed floor. My vote would be for a water-based urethane, simply because it looks good and it preserves the color. The metallic is still visible through it, the variations of the color of the powders is still good, the depth of color is still good, but that's just a personal opinion. The solvent-based urethane, it looks good as well. The only concern again would be how difficult it is to handle those blemishes that may or may not cause a problem for the owner uh, if their expectations are not managed from the beginning. Thanks for the time to watch. If you like what you saw, please drop a like below. If you have any questions, by all means, leave those below. And if you have any input, those are always welcome too. We always like to hear from anybody in the field that has experience using these products that can help other people who are expecting to use similar products to do their next project. Thanks again for watching.